Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. There's a real trend today to commit to your sounds as you're recording. What this means is that you're capturing the sound with all the effects and all the processing included as you lay it down to tape or to disc. This makes for very easy mix down later in the process because your sounds are basically complete, they're ready to go right there on the hard drive. But occasionally this can lead to some problems because you may commit to a sound that doesn't actually work when you get to the mix down stage. At that point, you can either re-record the track or you can do some work to clean it up and make it work within the context of your mix. I've got a situation today where I'm going to do exactly that. I've got a track today called Finch Food, which is on my upcoming EP Foundation. Now on this track, Carl Verheyen came in and played guest guitar. Carl, of course, is an amazing guitarist. He's played on tons of sessions in LA, all over the world. He's toured with Supertramp, done tons of great things. He's just an amazing, amazing musician and guitarist, and he always delivers great tones. So what he was playing on this track was kind of a funky rhythm track. It was a clean sound that had a phase shifter on it. We recorded it through a Fender Deluxe, and we had the reverb cranked up, and that's where our mistake came in. There was too much reverb on the track, and listening to it in the context of the mix, it's just a little too wet, a little too springy sounding. So I wanted to dry that up and have a cleaner tone without any reverb on it that I could process later with a room tone and make it fit into the mix better. Here's how I accomplished that. Let's take a look at Carl's tracks. Carl's amplifier, a Fender Deluxe, was mic'd up with two microphones, a Royer R121 ribbon and a Shure SM57 dynamic mic. I'm combining those two mics together to create a composite sound that delivers the tone of his amplifier that I want within the track. The two guitar tracks, Guitar Phase 121 and Guitar Phase 57, are being routed through mono aux inputs, and I've got a couple of processing options on those that we'll look at as we're drawing up these tracks. But here's what the track sounds like without any processing. It's a great sounding track, but you can hear there's a lot of reverb there, and the spring is really kind of springing at places. It's really making some, uh, some extra noise there that we don't want to have within the track. I want this to be nice and clean and pretty dry because it's a very complex track. There's a lot going on, and for it to cut through, a drier sound will work better in my opinion. So our goal here is to dry up those tracks and remove or at least reduce that amount of reverb that's in those tracks. Now I'll caution you, as with other videos we've done where we've been cleaning up tracks, to be conservative when you're doing this kind of processing. You can push things too far and start to add artifacts or to modify the tone of your original tracks. We don't want that. All we want to do is bring down the reverb a bit so the tracks are drier. I've got two plugins that'll offer different ways to accomplish this. Zenaptic Unveil, and the second one is D-Reverb, which is a module that comes within RX-6, Isotope's audio restoration and audio editing program. Now the D-Reverb module within RX-6 can be used as part of the standalone application, or here I'm running it as a separate plugin that's working on my track in real time in the mix. These two plugins work in very different ways. Unveil works by using complex mathematics to analyze the signal, separate it into what they call foreground and background components, and then reduce those background components, which in this case is going to bring down our reverb for us. The D-Reverb module in RX-6 works by learning a profile of the reverb, comparing that against the original track, and separating out that reverb profile, resulting in dry tracks. They both do a great job. Let's check out how they work. Let's start with Zenaptic Unveil. So again, here's our track with no processing. If I open up Unveil and activate it with my settings, here's the process track. You can hear that Unveil has done an amazing job of reducing the amount of reverb in the track. There's just barely a hint of it left there, and that won't be audible in our mix at all. It's an absolutely amazing plugin. Unveil comes with some very useful presets. They're available here under this down arrow, factory presets, and the one I actually used was gentle dereverberation. You can see that some settings are a little bit different than what I had, and the two controls that I'm going to focus on, one is called focus, and you can think of that as basically a wet dry blend between the background and the foreground components in the signal, in this case our dry signal and our reverb signal. So let me show you the effect that that has. Here's our track going through just the preset. If we turn focus down, you can hear the sound gets wetter, the reverb isn't being pushed down as much. If we turn focus up, we'll dry our track up. The other control that makes a big difference here is 1 over frequency localize right here. You can think of this control as basically the number of bands of processing that are being applied. As you turn it down, there are fewer bands. As you turn it up, there are more bands. In my opinion, this works better when you run it up higher. 
We can also tweak the processing using focus bias, which lets us adjust the individual bands, the transient threshold. We've got other controls here as well. And these can be used to not only affect the amount of reverb that's being reduced, but also to enhance the transients in the original signal and make them pop a bit more. The last thing I want to do is match my output gain so that the volume of the unprocessed track is the same as the volume of the processed track. And in my case, that works out to about a minus 3 dB setting. So once again, for comparison, here's our unprocessed track. And here's the track processed with Unveil. Unveil does a great job of removing reverb from tracks, and it's also very easy to use, as you can see. Simply call up a preset, make a few adjustments, and it's really amazing the results that you get. The second plugin I want to show you today is the D Reverb module from RX6. Let's check that out. D Reverb works in a very different way from Unveil. In this case, what the plugin does is learn a profile of the reverb and then apply that back against the original track to remove that reverb from the sound. So again, here's our unprocessed signal. And here's with processing from D-Reverb. Learning a profile of the reverb so that you can apply the D-Reverb plugin is very simple. Let's switch over to our waveform display. We'll zoom in here, move our plugin over a little bit. What we're looking for is a place where the reverb is ringing, but there's no dry signal behind it. So let's look right here. We have a nice reverb tail there, and now we'll tell RX to learn this reverb tail. Click the Learn button, hit Play, and you can see that D-Reverb made some changes to our parameters. Now I'm going to pull those down just a little bit, because when they're set too high, I find that we get some pumping in our signal, and it doesn't sound quite as natural. So let's pull those down to about 9. Artifact smoothing reduces any artifacts that might be in the signal and helps us to get a better result, so we'll leave that on. And we'll even enhance the dry signal on as well. So let's select this waveform, go back to our mixer, and here's our process signal. It's doing a great job of pulling that reverb out. Let's bypass and listen to the unprocessed signal, and then listen to the process signal again. You can see just how easy it is to use either of these plugins to remove reverb from the track. They work in different ways, but they both get great results. And it's really astounding that you're able to actually do this, to reach into a track and pull out the reverb. It's something we couldn't have done just a few years ago, so it's amazing we now have this technology at our fingertips. One caveat with this processing is it takes a lot of CPU power. You probably don't want to use it in real time. So what I would do before proceeding with my mix here is I would commit these tracks onto a new audio file so that I could work with the plugin deactivated, and that would free up my CPU power for more mixing. And what this does is allow us to add ambience back in where we feel it's needed. I've got two examples here, one where I'm adding sort of a spring reverb back on top, and another where we're using a room sound, which is what I'd probably go with in this mix. Let's check out the results when we run our dry signal back through those after-the-fact reverb processors. Here's our unprocessed signal. Here's our process signal. Now we can add a spring reverb back in. And because I've got this reverb coming in after the fact on an aux return, I can pan it wherever I like. In this case, it's panned off to the left. I can also set the level of that reverb wherever I want, and that allows me a lot more control than when I've got the reverb actually burned into the track as we had it originally here. Now I can also place this sound into a room, and I find it works much better to use a room reverb on a track like this when there's not a bunch of spring reverb on it in the amplifier itself. So let's bypass this, bring our room in. Yeah. 
I find that a track like that with some room reverb on it, particularly when that same room is being used on the drums, the other guitars, the saxophone, the horns, it makes for a much more cohesive mix. And I like the amount of control I'm getting here by running my dry signal either through the spring reverb or the room reverb, or in fact I could run through both. Both Synaptic Unveil and Isotope D-Reverb from within RX-6 are great tools for controlling the amount of reverb in your tracks. If you're having trouble with too much reverb, tracks that are too wet, definitely check these out. They'll make for much easier mixing down the line. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Mm -hmm.